you had bad boy in you before you got to the Pistons, or did the Pistons bring out the bad boy? No, I had, I had it in me before. <laughs> it was like, okay, it just enhanced me a little bit, having a guy like Bill Lambeer, you know, a guy that I hated playing against, and a guy that I hated as a teammate at a time. So it ended up, you know, when Lambeer got three-pieced by um, uh, Robert Parrish in the playoffs, I told Lambeer, you got to step up for yourself, man. You can't be letting nobody just – go at you if you don't go if you don't step up for yourself don't worry I got this under control and so you know the enforcer role was there I just my thing was you're my teammate and and it's about protection and Coop knows that very well it's like hey you you mess with one you're gonna mess with all we gotta go at this because you know we gotta establish that and when I look at the playoffs now I thought I thought Paul Millsap at, at a crucial time in that game four where it could have been, a, you know, that game five, where it could have been a sweep. His intensity of setting the tone, like, hey, man, hey, we ain't going for this no more, man. We ain't going for the bully ball. And that makes it competitive because you sit there and saying, these guys running with their tails up there, up their butt. But yet it was the fact that, you know what? I didn't give a damn who you were. It was the Pistons versus everybody. And you know what, Rick? I, I think you hit on something right there that I, I like, again, I don't think it's necessary. Well, in a sense, it's it being an enforcer, but it's just about not letting team people get away with cheap shots and certain things. Now, take yourself, 6'9", 240, 250 back when you played. I was 6'6", 170. Millsap is, what, 6'9", 220, something like that. So the size doesn't matter. I think it's just the heart and the attitude that you have to take because, again, when you're playing people and – you know, I don't want to call myself a protector. I mean, but somebody levels one on Magic or or, or Kareem, you you know, hey, I, I as little as I was, I was going to step up and say something. And again, that was perfect what you said. Millsap stepped up, did what he had to do, and they won that game. And then the coach had him on the bench at the end of the game. But he had played his role to perfection to instigate something to, to, to compel his team to go on and win. You know, that's that's it. You, you you hit the nail on the head, Coop. You go, hmm, man, this dude, they, they just whooping up on us. You know, you got uh, smart uh, Marcus Morris, uh, the way that he plays. If you don't match the intensity of the other team, and if you don't step – it's guys that play their roles, and this is how we survive in the NBA. You play a role, and you, you, you enrich it. And it's like, you know what, if I got to set the tone, you know, is if you're invisible – in the NBA, something's wrong because it's not the fact that you have to go out there and be a thug or whatever they, you know, play goon ball. Well, you know what? The matchups against the Lakers and the Celtics was a prime example. You know, you got Lance Berger going for a shot. And you got Larry Bird trying to rip his neck off. And then they look at you and identify you as a villain. Oh, he's a thug. This is bad. This is not professional sports. But it's like, okay, it's establishing a tone. You got to have a tone setter. If you don't, then this team going to feel like they can get away with murder. And if you don't compete, it's not the fact that you're playing dirty basketball. It's the fact that, you know, what, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to make sure you let the, you know, let, let you know, come in this lane again. I'm going to knock you on your ass. I'm glad you said that, Rick, because you go to Hampton, you find yourself in the NBA, you're with the Washington uh, team. And I was going to ask you, what's the difference from you uh, being a Washington player as opposed to being a Piston player? Do you consider yourself a dirty player or a thug? <laughs> <laughs> I, I consider myself, uh, Michael Cooper and, and Irie, I consider myself a professional. And the thing is about being a professional, <laughs> you go out there, you take care of your business. Did I want to hurt anybody or maim anybody? No. I just wanted to make sure that come see the thing about me coming from a division two school. Come on, Coop. They'd be looking at you like, <laughs> where the hell is Hampton Institute? Is that some crazy ass school? Oh, has he been institutionalized? No, I went to a HBCU. And let me tell you something, man, you had to fight at games. We didn't have the biggest arenas. You, you probably, the most you probably seen was three, maybe 3000 in a pack gym, depending on if you're playing a Norfolk state or if you're playing a Virginia Union, or you're playing a St. Augustine, or in, or North Carolina a t at that time, you get you going like, okay, the, you, you got the section, what do they call it, 33? It was this one school called St. Paul in, in Virginia, 
and they had this group, this group of guys, three three rows underneath the basket. They can just stick their arms and touch you. And it's going like, man, you say something to me again, wow. I'm going to go out there and, and I'm going to slap you. Shut up. So <laughs> it was like, you know what? Hey, I had to fight. The thing is, you, you're not, it's not that you know you're going to be a gifted athlete. You know, it's not like you can jump high and run fast, but you, you like your role. And the thing is, I enriched my role by playing. How do, how do I get an identity? So I, I, they identified me as a guy that I knew I could score. I knew I could rebound. That's the NBA. Everybody learned how to do something right. So, I mean, the thing is, you sacrifice one for the other. I got paid to play uh, – if they wanted to call it thug basketball or intimidation, it was a tone setting for me. It was like, okay, you know, Coop, and you know, if you see my eyes and our eyes look, it's like, oh, man, if I go in there, do I want to get mm, a little touched up or do I want to sit in and take that short shot? That's no what question. Michael Jordan learned how to play that, 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 that short game. That's the thing about <laughs> his game. You know, he got his ass beat so much. It's like, I ain't mess with them big old thugs. 